Hey guys and welcome everyone to a new video to discuss various topics related to blockchain. Myself Somyajit as your host working as a data analyst in a logistics company. Well, uh, like any other videos that we have seen in the blockchain playlist. So today is a very special video and we have a guest here that is Mr. Lagnajit. He is also my brother. Please, if you may introduce yourself. Hi everyone, uh, myself Lagnajit Parida and I'm Swamajit's brother and I'm working <coughs> as a data analyst uh, with one of the automobile startups in the Bay Area in San Francisco, uh, California in US. Thanks for having me. OK, so coming directly to today's agenda. So in today's topic, we are going to discuss. About blockchain and we are going to answer six basic questions that everyone has. We will also discuss about the future and what are the trends and we will listen everything from Lagnajit. OK, Lagnajit, without further ado, let's begin. I don't want to prolong this session because uh, I have planned for 20 to 30 minutes. So for each question, you will be getting around three to four minutes. So I know uh, you are intelligent enough to answer all these questions within a short span of time, but OK, let's hear from you. The first question, even I also have that that question that how do you perceive the whole blockchain market and if you may describe it in few lines for the young users and as well as the experienced users. Yeah, so uh, blockchains are like distributed uh, systems like basically uh, a chain which has like a bunch of transactions in each of these blocks and that is what kind of makes a blockchain and the fascinating uh, thing about blockchains are like it's uh, distributed so there is no central point of failure uh, like which is uh, different from what we have today like all these big organizations they are like all centralized and um, it's very easy to kind of uh, for them to kind of manipulate things uh, like we see we have seen in different elections where uh, like uh, for example Facebook right like they can they do have control to manipulate uh, its audiences by like uh, showing targeted ads right like uh, so uh, blockchains doesn't have like a central a central point of a centralized point of failure right so that's kind of the fascinating tech about blockchain and i think that it is still in its nascent phase because the mainstream adoption has not happened yet uh, but there is a lot of things that is uh, going in the back end i'm seeing a lot of like development activity like it's luring a lot of developers every day uh, into uh, the industry and I see a lot of potential in the market. So it's fascinating. OK, so blockchain is like uh, fully decentralized and then no one has control. Mm. So then uh, then no one can manipulate. Uh, that's 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 fascinating. OK, so okay. it's owned by the community. It's owned by the participants. So everyone okay. who is like uh, maintaining the blockchains, right? You can like start a own node by yourself and you can have a say. Basically, it's community owned, like uh, whoever is maintaining the nodes, uh, they have like a vote. It's like I mean, you can determine uh, uh, like the uh, progress uh, in a blockchain network through its community voting, right? Like that's how uh, it's it doesn't have like one person with all the power like like that kind of. So it's like everyone has a share. That is what yeah. I understand. Exactly. Good, so it's good. basically distributing the power to the community, to the people. To the people. OK, OK. OK, coming to the second question. Where we are right now in relation to crypto market because this word crypto market I hear it often in the news so where <laughs> we are right now if you may describe the crypto market as a whole in few lines in a summary and what are the future uh, projections and but just just yeah, means where we are in the crypto market right now and in the blockchain development so um, I think like we uh, like are still get to see like uh, some mainstream apps we haven't seen like the mainstream uh, uh, has not seen the benefits of crypto like uh, it's a very uh, 
uh, promising tech and uh, as i said like the number of users interacting with blockchain tech is growing by the day and so there is uh, there is a, a really cool um, chart like which was uh, published a few uh, months back that i can if i can share um it's of the if you can see my screen yeah uh, so is see. it it's the it's the uh, technology ad- adoption curve like it's on a log scale so basically the number of crypto users uh, in comparison to the internet users like it so uh, the growth in crypto users uh, are some somewhat similar it is uh, it's following a similar uh, uh, trend as the internet users in like pre 2000 right like when uh, internet was booming uh, so as you can see like uh, this was this is a slightly old chart but in 2021 like you see like we are kind of here and it is growing at a, actually a faster rate than uh, like internet during its early days right so and it's projected right like in uh, 2024 we will have like close to a billion users right so th- there is still a lot of growth that needs to happen uh, but we are definitely i think we are at an early stage and there is still a lot of work to be done to kind of reach mainstream adoption okay so what i see here is that uh, or what i get the information is that we are still in a very young phase i mean in a very early phase and there is a high or there is a lot of potential to grow and people are also adopting it that is what i get the message yeah exactly so it's still like growing like there are a lot of apps that are currently um, being developed and i mean currently i think there are some limitations in blockchain tech like uh, some of the popular blockchains like bitcoin and ethereum it's not that cheap uh, like it comes at a cost Be- basically this blockchains this popular blockchains are decentralized uh, so and it comes with a cost uh, so it's not uh, cheap to kind of transact on the ethereum blockchain so that is why like there are uh, multiple uh, layer 2 solutions which are built on top of the ethereum blockchain so to kind of um, scale uh, the tech basically so to make it cheaper so all these layer 2 solutions uh, i think there is a really nice website if i can uh so if you go to l2fees.info you will see all these uh, and this is just specifically for ethereum uh, blockchain so all these uh, uh, uh network that you are seeing these are all l2 solutions and uh, so if you see here like in ethereum uh the uh, price for making a transaction is like currently 1.23 dollars which is expensive right like for mainstream adoption like if you want to kind of uh think about like a social media right like um if you want to decentralize it like it's not cheap to kind of build that on the ethereum blockchain so we need kind of solutions uh, on top of uh, the ethereum blockchain uh, so that like uh, there are these different l2 solutions that are being uh, worked on being developed and once we make the uh, uh, the uh, make it cheaper right like then only uh, we can achieve mainstream adoption that's like kind of one of the hurdles that we need to kind of cross and 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 i think like in 4 to 5 years uh, we will be uh, in that uh, stage where we can like um, build some apps which is cheap enough for like any uh, uh, random person to interact on the blockchain basically and how do you see in addition to the second question i would like to add a question how do you see things are going cheaper is it that more people adopting to it it's like mass production and then the things will become cheaper so so basically say- okay okay uh, so why again like why these uh, layer two solutions like which are like blockchains only but these are like uh, what uh, these would be uh, running on top of the ethereum blockchain so one so why like ethereum is so popular because it is decentralized so there are like close to uh, 4000 or so nodes like uh, uh, which kind of uh, maintain the ethereum blockchain so it's decentralized so one of the uh, biggest advantages of a good blockchain uh, network is like decentralizing aspect of it so no one can uh, 
like no government authority can just uh, shut down the ethereum blockchain there is no central point of failure uh, so that is why like it is very popular uh, also like bitcoin it's very popular because it is very decentralized anyone can start a node and start maintaining the network uh, so that is why these solutions these l2 solutions are being uh, built on top of the ethereum blockchain so that basically what they will do is they will take all these transactions that is ha that normally happens on a blockchain uh, they will try to uh, bucket these uh, transactions into and like use cryptography and uh, the various uh, different uh, solutions like just kind of uh, combine these transactions and do the compute and settle it on the ethereum blockchain so to it like someone to someone on the ethereum blockchain it will show as one transaction happening but on uh, like essentially what it happens is like taking thousands of transactions bucketing it and doing a cryptographic uh, solution and transacting that just one transaction on the ethereum blockchain that's how they are planning to make it cheaper right like the transactions that currently happens on the execution layer okay it's like uh, the hash and the cryptography which is happening in the layer one it will be transferred to the layer two and there things are getting combined because now we are doing all the transactions in layer one but so, these all transactions the thousands transactions are going to the layer two and the yeah. tech layer is the good doing their so basically what yeah what they will take uh, will be thousands of these transactions that normally happens on the ethereum blockchain but they will take that and they will do all the compute basically uh, and then they will just spit out a proof of okay. those thousand transactions happening on their layer to the ethereum blockchain that okay this was a proof we are sending it out and this is this will be kind of settled on ethereum blockchain so okay so so it's like a polygon chain like a polygon network has built so polygon Polygon, I would not say that as a layer two solution. That's why, like when I I uh, was showing, like so, Polygon has a bunch of products. So one of them, the main product, when they started, they started as a side chain. So side chain is basically like a Ethereum layer one. So it has no, it doesn't uh, get the security of the Ethereum blockchain because they're like it is much. I mean, on a um, decentralization scale it uh, ranks much below than ethereum because ethereum has a lot more nodes like validating the chain so i won't say like side chain as like a layer two solution but they are also working if you go to their uh, website uh, they have like various other products uh, like l2 solutions that they are working on uh, that will settle directly to the ethereum blockchain Okay, an example to the viewers for layer two solution. That is what my question was like. Okay, I thought maybe Polygon, but thanks for uh, elaborating it. But then uh, a, an example for L2 yeah. Solution let me uh, yeah, let me share some of the projects that Polygon is working on. So uh, let's see. So yeah, you can see here, right? Like so, if you go just to the Polygon dot technology. That's their website, and you see they they have these different projects, right? So Polygon POS is the side chain that I am talking about, which is not like a you see, right? Like they have mentioned it, like enabled side chain. So this is yeah. not a layer two solution. Layer two is basically they will handle all the compute and they will essentially settle on the Ethereum blockchain. So this is I the I mean this I would say like is just a fork of the Ethereum blockchain with like. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, but they have these different um, other projects like which are um, I mean roll ups, right? Roll ups are like what we are talking about, like uh, the um, L2 okay, solution. Example for layer two. So layer two, yeah, I mean okay, this one like I was showing. So okay. ZK Sync, Optimism, Arbitrum. Oh, okay, okay. Then, okay, then there is here, yeah by knowing so there is one viewers, yeah so then there the is one can uh, directly go to the links and check check about the projects and yeah yeah exactly so yeah. yeah we can I can share the links with you like l2fees.info where you will see like uh, 
uh, I mean, you can see here, right? Like if uh, we transact directly on the Ethereum blockchain, it is like a dollar 23 cents and it changes based on like the priority. Like, so if you are a user and you want to prioritize your transaction over other, because like the block space, right? Block space is basically in one block, uh, how many transactions uh, like can go into that block before it is added and to the blockchain, right? And that is limited, right? There can be 15 or so transactions per second in the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, sometimes you as a user, you can tip, right? For prioritizing your transaction to be added first over other uh, users, right? So there you kind of give a fee, right? So that kind of, this kind of varies based on um, the demand of, for the block space, right? And you can see the other L2 solutions. Um, yeah, it's uh, cheaper, right? Like it's 5x, 10x cheaper, and it will go uh, cheap more in the future because there are much more optimization techniques. There is less, like uh, if you go to L2 Beat, you can see like all of, see these are like a lot more than what I was showing in the previous screen. So Starknet is a really good, uh, like ZK roll up and it is growing and it will grow more. I think this will, it will be probably on the top. <laughs> it's one of the really good L2 solutions. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there is a lot of potential and there are a lot of work being done in the L2 world. Okay, that um, that's a clear, uh, like, a, like a good description about the L2 and about Ethereum and everything. One thing you mentioned, uh, uh, Lagnajit, about the price that everything mm -hmm. comes at a cost. You mentioned about that. Yeah. Um, I am also like a yeah, small investor and uh, I also invested something in Ethereum. How do you see uh, the whole, uh, the crypto market? Is it a good time to invest? Any suggestions? And uh, what is your short term and long term strategy? Because uh, at the end of the day, yeah, uh, the users are, it's okay that the projects are going, they're helping the society with technology. Uh, but at the end, uh, people are also interested to know how how much they should invest and what are the likelihood of uh, yeah profits. I mean, anything about that area of the investment part in the crypto market? So uh, first of all, um, let me tell you, like crypto is extremely risky, and there are like a lot of scams there. Like I would say, like. Um, 95% of happenings in crypto are like all scams and there are like a lot of get rich quick schemes, but the remaining 5% is where I think the real progress is being done. And uh, that may, that has a really good potential of changing the world, like for the good, right? Like to remove the middlemen from different uh, financial instruments that we have today. Uh, so that being said, I mean, uh, I would say like um, you should invest uh, only that much which you are willing to kind of lose entirely because it's a very, it's like a still in an experimental phase and uh, it can go down to zero, right? Like, so uh, you should try to learn more about the tech and uh, it's still, it's a very small um, player in the global uh, markets. So there is a huge potential for growth, but at the same time, it's full of risks and you should know what you're investing in, right? Like, so, um, I mean, uh, if you ask me, then I would say like, start with like blue chips, uh, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then maybe uh, learn about the tech and learn about other various products, the startups coming into this field and uh, like read the white paper. If they if a project has a white paper, right? Like then read about that, like read about uh, like how the coins, like how many coins are there circulating, how many are like distributed, like how the uh, um, team is, like learn about like what their work is. I would say like learn more about that before like investing in any uh, project, right? So, yeah. Okay, one of the disclaimer to the viewers also that we are not financial advisor, but based on our experience, uh, we are having these discussions. So, uh, for example, uh, yeah, I have been uh, in the crypto market since one year, so I know a little bit, but not much. So please don't take this as an advice that, for example, we are saying discussing here 
investing in Bitcoin or Ethereum. So that's a disclaimer. OK, yeah. so thank, thank you, uh, Lagranjit, in guiding there that uh, because uh, yeah, you are right that the blue chip market means the Bitcoin and blue chip crypto crypto coins, that is the Ethereum and Bitcoin. Those are the safe havens. Yeah, because uh, it's been it's been so one of the reasons I said that because Bitcoin has been there since um, I would say like since 20, uh, 2008 and it's been like 14 years that Bitcoin um, network has been operational and no one has hacked it. And it's basically uh, kind of a, a impregnable kind of network and it's designed like that. So uh, that that can be trusted, like the trust uh, factor in Bitcoin is much higher than any of these new projects that are popping up every day, right? You can't really say uh, like, uh what these projects like how these projects are going to survive if you look at like if you i mean just to kind of check like the performance of this all these like non bitcoin or non ethereum uh, chains you should look at like the top 20 coins in say 2017 right or 2016 how uh, the top 20 uh, coins uh, performed from that time to now right like who are the top 20 coins you'll see like a lot of uh, uh, chains like other than Bitcoin and Ethereum, they don't even there like they have all failed, right? So there is high chance that um, uh, the next uh, uh, like uh, popular chain, which is like uh, will <laughs> may also fail, right? So these like Bitcoin and Ethereum, they have uh, stood the test of time. So uh, that's why like I call them blue chips. Okay, that's uh, insightful. Uh, because uh, because because the, with high volatility, I th there are many good or like the the like investors like uh, uh, the the well known investors they have said that uh, yeah they do yeah this cryptocurrency market don't have any uh, future value or something. So do you see that the blue chips that you refer to us that Ethereum and Bitcoin do do they have the potential of growth in the future in the next five years? Yeah, of course. Like, I mean, Bitcoin, what it is trying to be is like Even Warren, Buffett. <laughs> Warren Buffett also said that uh, Bitcoin yeah, yeah, has... there are there are always people like who are against new technology, like when Internet came and I mean, I can there is a really nice uh, uh, talk. So which happened in, I think, 1997. Right, like uh, David Letterman uh, uh, show. Uh, so he made fun of the internet, right? When it was starting in 1997, right? So for every new technology, definitely there would be people who will mock it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that this doesn't have potential. So what Bitcoin did was basically uh, showed the world that there can be a network, that can be a payments network without any failure uh, point, right? Like, uh, I mean, the government has no control over it, uh, right? They can't just yeah, that's, uh, that's very ban true the Bitcoin. Yeah, there is no middleman, basically. There is no one, yeah, but yeah. it had not happened before, right? Like, so currently, uh, I mean, the bank account you are using, right? Like they can block your account. They can, it's it's in their database, right? They can uh, reduce the interest. Like yesterday they were giving you like 1% interest or 2% interest, but today they can just make it zero, right? And they can take away your account, right? So, um, yeah. but anyone can just, uh, if they have like access to internet, they can open up a wallet and they can uh, start transacting on the Bitcoin network, right? So um, that's kind of the... Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that, that. That is true. That is true. That is absolutely yeah. true. So but, it, but it, we, yeah. So do you consider Bitcoin as a stable coin? No, it's not a stable. So stable coins are basically crypto dollars. Like they. So um, in the crypto world, these Bitcoin and Ethereum and Solana and Cardano, these the these are very volatile, right? So it's very difficult to transact with Bitcoin, right? Like, uh, um, because yesterday it was say $35,000, today it may be $30,000, right? It's very difficult to transact. High volatility, uh, yes. Uh, high volatility. That's why like these uh, stable coins are uh, coming in. Like uh, there are 
other stable coins like tether uh, usdc so uh, they are essentially like um, uh, coins that are pegged to the us dollar so that uh, they can transact like i mean these can be transacted on the crypto uh, 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 world right like it will keep its value right like yesterday uh, 200 tether would be equal to uh, 200 Tether today, right? Like because it's two hundred dollars. So stable coins are like that. Because uh, this brings to our fourth question. Because I want you to describe in a very briefly that what happened in the case of Luna, and mm-hmm. it has been told in many of the articles that uh, now people are losing trust in the crypto market because of the Luna case. So what happened exactly? and in brief so luna i think i would say luna was an experiment which failed and experiment as in like all the other stable coins right like if you look at all the stable coins that are currently in the crypto market today uh, tether usdc and binance usd and then there is this uh, luna right so um, tether and usdc they are backed one to one by their bank reserves like they would have 1 dollar in their um uh, in their reserves to put like 1 dollar in the crypto world like crypto market right like yeah, uh, like an exchange yeah, yeah so yeah. it's like they have backing to kind of uh, if say they someone wants to withdraw like tether then they would uh, they can fill that with their reserves right Exchange but these, yeah, yeah. so luna the difference was like it was not backed by dollar right like they kind of yeah it's alg- uh, it's all like um, based on a, uh, or, uh, algorithmic, like a algorithmic algorithmic like on a contract so they had this luna uh, like cryptocurrency and uh, this ust as the stable coin right like so it was pegged to that uh and that kind of failed because uh someone found a loophole and they attacked it basically they started uh selling a lot of these uh uh coins and they couldn't uh i mean the way that chain worked was basically if someone withdraws the uh usd which is the stable coin they will kind of uh, pull, like put a lot of these luna like a lot of these luna which was the cryptocurrency Uh, it will come into to back that up right like so kind of there was some uh, uh, um, like pegging that was happening between the usd and the uh, luna and uh, so they so the blockchain worked exactly like it was programmed but someone found a loophole and they it kind of uh, made them go into a death spiral because like people started selling both uh usd and yes, luna as, as the luna, luna at the same time so that's why like it lost its dpeg and it's like people got uh scared and they like everyone started selling so that's why selling. like uh, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. uh made like a 40 billion dollar um company go like Bank bust uh, in a couple of uh, yeah days yeah so it's yeah, it's yeah. still a it's still in a experimental phase i would say and that's why like it kind of i think Uh, put back the crypto industry uh, by like one to two years, but it's I mean it's still a as I said like it's still in the in the experimental phase and there is a lot of things that needs to be uh, mm, done to kind of okay. yeah yeah exactly yes yeah so yeah yeah um, but I, I don't yeah. think yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because uh, uh, okay this brings to the fifth question of ours because. Uh, in web 3 we don't have any control so anyone can come up with innovative projects mm-hmm. okay what are your perceptions for innovative projects for future like a short term and long term how do you see this crypto markets this blockchain is going to benefit the whole uh, means in a short term and a long term in the future how do you see this yeah, pro- there are like benefit? because projects can go on for yeah some thousands of your technology they will be saying that they are developing it but how do you see these implementations are happening and how do you see or which projects are coming some examples something like that yeah so i can talk about a couple of um, really innovative things that has happened in the crypto and it has like it is going mainstream slowly but 
uh, like for example defi uh, decentralized finance uh, so if you i mean if you just go to uh, if you want to know like what defi means so basically just go to uh, wiki and it has a very nice uh, uh, description like description, uh, yeah. so basically the main idea of defi is like uh, it offers these different products uh, without Uh, relying on intermediaries right like if you want to say make an international payment or like uh, want to get uh, interest right on any of your savings right so um, currently uh, this uh, uh, like you have to put money in a bank and it will give you like these different uh, yields right so defi kind of does the same but it doesn't um, have any middlemen uh, like no banks or anything like it will all run on code like there will be smart contracts doing this exact same thing for you smart contracts are basically uh, uh, transactions but uh, uh, with a programming like language it, yeah uh, yeah yeah it's like i mean just like bitcoin uh, supports like payments then uh, ethereum yeah. is basically like the same thing but instead of yeah. payments you have like smart contracts like you can code anything like any kind of different uh, transaction Uh, um like you can make it logic like based right based on between, yeah the e- exact, and, uh, exactly exactly so and then okay there are some agreements there like a full so, fixed agreements yeah 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 but uh, banks would have something like that because they would uh, determine like they would change the interest based on the supply and demand and so uh, defi uh, goal like goal is to make the same like provide the same products but with no intermediary so like if you go ask for a loan to the bank that it will depend on a lot of these factors right like they give you that yeah. interest rate based on a lot of factors right Because, and also yeah. like yeah. bank spends a lot of its energy and like resources to kind of process that loan right but yeah. here like in case of defi it doesn't have that like it all operates uh, autonomously on a blockchain and uh, it, there is no uh, banks or like any kind of uh, intermediary is involved so i think like definitely it will be a superior product because it will be based on code and, and anyone can go and check that code right like it will be all transparent right you can go uh, there are like couple of examples i mean this so compound is like a, uh, even i can apply for a loan in the crypto market exactly and, exactly uh, so you it, can so it means i don't have to go to the through the hassles of this documentations and everything but uh, exactly. don't you think the frauds or something means how they are going to check the identities or something or is it it's already there so the so all the code and everything the smart contracts right it's all like public information so if uh, it is uh, if there would be some uh, loopholes people will catch it it will not get popular right yes uh, yes yes so agreed. so if yes. like for example compound is a very popular uh, protocol and uh, you can see like there are they are already offering some interest like if for institution say like you if you uh, put uh, like usd and it uh, it is like totally automated like no one has any control and they can't really change it's you can see the code yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and uh, so this is a very uh, uh, successful like defi product uh, that and 4% is not bad right like apr but again like i mean i don't uh, really uh, use compound but you should always do your research and look at uh like it's uh like w- w- the contract the code and, uh, yeah 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 exactly yeah, but the good thing is like you don't need to kind of fill all the paperwork it's all like just open a wallet and you can interact uh, like get some eth or like get some usd c and then use compound to kind of raise uh, like get yeah, yield right on top yeah fascinating yeah because the banks will be gone and it's fascinating that thinking about all these things yeah it's Sometimes. yeah it has it has a lot of potential but the main thing is like uh, like simply put i think with it's no like, intermediaries like, like okay. yeah with no intermediaries like basically it will be more efficient right like uh, there will be no discrimination uh, right like uh, um, no favoritism right? uh, like that right so it will all yes. work on code right yes. like and anyone yes. can use it like there will be uh, uh, like there are a lot of Uh, unbanked people in the world so any uh, they can start uh, uh, using these products if they have a phone and a internet connection right they don't have to kind of um, check with a regulated uh, institution regulated right institutions, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so now we come to the last question of our discussion 
Well, uh, I have been hearing this word called NFT. What does it yeah, mean yeah. and what is the future of it? Yeah, um, sure. So NFTs are like digital collectibles. Um, so the difference between, like, say, uh, NFT and, let's say, a Ethereum coin is, like, if I give you one Ethereum, and you give me one Ethereum, it's the same thing, right? Like uh, it's it's fungible, yeah, it's but the non-fungible yeah. token is basically, uh, it's unique. So every NFT is unique. Uh, and imagine like if there is an NFT minted on a blockchain, so that's basically a location in that blockchain, uh, like someone mints- uh, For a lifetime, uh, it's a lifetime, I guess. It's for a lifetime, yeah. So, and yeah, it's- It has an uh, address. Okay, okay. And it's like platform uh, agnostic. So basically you can, uh, it's it's like interoperable. I mean, that interoperability is there. Basically it's like not platform dependent. Like, uh, so it you can access your NFT from anywhere uh, because like mm, that blockchain is the, everywhere, right? Like, so anyone, uh, I mean, you are using Twitter. If Twitter supports NFT or like Facebook supports NFT, it will still be uh, on that blockchain on that very address. So it's unique, right? It's uh, like anyone from Africa or any part of the corner of the earth, they can they have accessibility because of the Web3. That is yeah, okay. if okay. yeah, if if the platform goes away, right? Like if there is a platform in Africa, right, and it goes away, uh, but that doesn't mean that NFT will go away as well, right? Like if uh, like for example, if tomorrow uh, Instagram like just goes away, right? then all the data, all your in your profile would be gone with that, right? But uh, if, say, like all the pictures that you have in Instagram are like NFTs, uh, so that doesn't mean that Instagram yeah, yeah. is, if it's has been gone, the NFTs would be gone, right? Like that can be another product like Instagram, uh, and you can bring all that, uh, uh, all your pictures, if they have, like, are there as an NFT, you can bring that in. So, I mean... Uh, a good it's use like case a would decentralized be like, Instagram. That is what you want to say. Or uh, it's like it's like uh, it's. I mean, it can be and, anything, and right? Is it only about images, or it has? Oh, no, it's not about. Yeah, yes, it's, I don't think it's what about images. So, so images yeah. is something which has like I don't think it has any use cases, but it's like the I think the real potential of NFTs would come in when say for example uh, you want to transfer like car ownership, right? Like um, uh, ah, then. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to say uh, you want to uh, pass on the registration, you want to sell your car, right? Like if the your owner, like if the ownership of the car is on a blockchain, right? Like you, anyone can verify that you are the owner, right? Currently, you are uh, kind of relying so on a piece of paper, right? Decentralized data, something like that. You want to say exactly? Yeah, you. I mean, if, it's basically okay. ownership. Yeah, ownership okay. on a blockchain, right? Like so, it can be anything. You you buy a ticket. Uh, to an event, and that can be an NFT, right? And okay. anyone can verify. Movie ticket or something? Anything, like anything. Like, anything. Yeah, anything. anything. Oh, it can okay. be anything. It, it doesn't okay. have to be images. Uh, but, I mean, uh, I think uh, these images uh, made it very popular, like uh, yeah, all these code apps like, and I also think uh, crypto punks. That, that, yeah, yeah, but it can be anything. It's like basically digital ownership, which anyone can verify and uh, validate, right? Uh, you don't need yeah. like a, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I think about a lot of things that can be uh, that can be potential use cases. Like say, um, if you go to a supermarket and you want to buy like organic eggs, right? Uh, so you just, today, like you just read the, um, like the, um, the product like uh, uh, what is written on top of it and there is no way to verify right but if you if they give you a like a uh, uh, something to scan in and you can verify that going to the uh, um, blockchain and seeing okay this is yeah so no like once that is uh, set up right like once the process is set up uh, and it will be automated right even like the smart contracts right if they, those are published on the ethereum blockchain uh, then uh, even the creator of that smart contract, they can't go and change that smart contract. They can't change the logic of that smart contract. It is there, there forever. So, so, so it's like one way, one way road, and uh, everything is like uh, 
yeah uh, non decentralized and people cannot tamper with it and yeah uh, tamp- yeah exactly so i mean uh, there are some side effects like i mean it's not uh, because there can be hacks and if something there is lo- some loophole in the smart contract then people can misuse it but i mean again like i think overall it's a net positive for the world i think yeah at least one of the myth for me is clear that nft is not about only images but it, it has a lot of potential that we it can ha- it, yeah it has resolve. a lot of even like i think there is a product which is being worked on that like signed in with ethereum right if like if you uh, if you have gone let me I, actually i can share my screen there is one cool thing that i also came across recently mm, let's see so the dune so this is like a um uh, this is a website where you can go and check all these uh, different dashboards you can see like uh, uh, like how the market is like defi and there are a lot of different dashboards you can check it out but one thing i uh, noticed recently is like if so you want like, to sign uh, in right so, so if you want like to sign in API of uh, the crypto market <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i mean it's like like you can go and you have access to a lot of these uh, you can create these dashboards also but one one cool thing i want to show before i uh, go to the dashboards is like here like you see there is a sign in with ethereum right so um, if you go here like i mean it asks you to connect your metamask right and you can use like let me i can share my so i can go and i have my um, a wallet digital wallet yeah i have a, i have a digital wallet so i can basically it's it's super easy uh, uh lagrajit we also have to take time into consideration we already yeah, yeah. prolonged our session but then uh, yeah we will wrap up now yeah yeah sure so yeah i i mean i i can use my phone and or but i it's just one address i have like uh, it's a, like a, a ens address so i i signed in using ethereum right so uh, i mean if we think that like ethereum will be the like the base settlement layer of the internet then uh, just having one sign in for all your accounts right like your bank accounts your like everything uh, it is much easier to kind of uh, maintain than having like different login passwords for different accounts uh, yeah so there are a bunch of like password like you can you want to see like how defi is doing uses time there are like a lot of these uh, like charts and you can see like how different defi products and like um, they're trending and how they're uh, attracting users so yeah okay so we will be providing the viewers all these links that you shared with us and well uh, thank you lagnajit for uh, being in the talk show well it is very insightful all the insights that you gave is really helpful for me and i think mm-hmm. uh, for any other users it will also be helpful Okay thank you thank you and thanks a lot we will yeah. see each other in the next video yeah thanks for inviting okay bye thank you and uh, good day to all the viewers okay bye bye